Hey everybody. Um, <clears throat> this is the butterfly. <laughs> you came out this morning. Um, I didn't get to make it to work to the greenhouse, so I think I just have to let him um, go here at home and hopefully he can find some flowers, some nectar. It's raining and it's still kind of cold, so I don't know. I don't really know what to do, um, but he's very fragile right now, so I don't think I should try and transport him. But I got him out of the jar and uh, I took the label off because it was sticky. I didn't want his feet getting stuck to it. And so now, according to um, everything I've read, he should be strengthening his wings, um, pumping fluid into them to make them stronger and to dry them off. Um, so now I'm going to sit here and wait <laughs> until he's strong enough to fly away. Um, I would, yeah, I don't know. I would like to take him to work and get him into that greenhouse. Maybe what I can do is get a bigger jar. Like I've got this measuring cup. I was thinking if I could try and get it so that he's suspended in there and uh, covered. Then... Um, because the, the little jar that he was in was too small and his wings were touching the bottom of the jar and that's not good, I'm sure. So, yeah, maybe what I'll do is, um, he's just gonna be chilling out now, really. Oops, there he is there. He was, he was, um, it was really cool. He was, I didn't get to see him actually come out because I was in the shower, but when I came downstairs he was already kind of unfolded and um, moving around a lot and, I, um, yeah, like I said, I got him out of the jar, and now I've just been holding him here. Um, but I really think if I can get him to that greenhouse, it would be way better. Because then he can have some flowers and some heat. So I think I'm going to go. I'm going to try and get him rig something to this uh, measuring cup so that he can hang in there. And see if I can safely get him to work. So... I will um, try and videotape that. Okay, bye. Okay, so it's lunchtime, and uh, <clears throat> it's been an interesting morning with this little guy. Girl, actually, it's a female, I found out. See what she's doing there? She's um, separating her little tongue. Um, <clears throat> which she'll use to eat. And uh, I guess it's actually two pieces, but they start out connected and so it has to kind of unzip. That's what she's finally starting to do. She was worrying me because uh, she hasn't eaten anything yet. And um, so basically what happened was this morning I tried to take her to my work um, and put her in the greenhouse, but there were no flowers in there, <clears throat> and so I took her to this, like, botanical garden thing that I nearby, and they've got a greenhouse there that's got, like, uh, tropical flowers in it, and it's heated, and I was going to, um, try and let her go in there, but it's locked, um, until April, and it's March, um, and so then I tried to let her go outside, and she pretty much, like, instantly started freezing to death. So, yeah, it was not cool. <clears throat> so I brought her with me back to work, um, tried to... I was going to let her go in the greenhouse and just hope that she could eat something in there. But when I got there, my boss was there, and he was not having that. <laughs> Even though my other boss said it was fine, but, um, yeah. <gasps> Look at her little looking around. I haven't seen her do that yet. Cool. Um, so, <clears throat> so then I was freaking out because she, you know, I didn't know how long she needed to, how quickly she needed to eat something or whatever. And she was in this little jar that was like way too small for her. So um, it was actually my co-worker who originally found the cocoon who um, helped me to kind of get her situated in this little makeshift house <laughs> that we made 
Um, it's got some rocks in there and some flowers. These are edible flowers. I mean, they're safe for human consumption. Um, but they're cut, so I don't know if they've still got any nectar in them, so I'm gonna have to... That's just for right now, but... I've stuffed a couple in the top there so that they're... There's some air holes. I gotta make some more air holes. Um, <clears throat> and then there's a little bit of water in a... like um, a pop bottle lid and some honey in the other one in case she needs that. Because I guess she needs sugar. That's what it boils down to. So, um, yeah, it's definitely too cold to let her out. She's gonna freeze to death. So it looks like I've got myself a pet butterfly <laughs> for a while at least. Until it gets warmer, I think maybe I'll try and let her go like in in a couple months, I guess. Uh, according to my coworker, these guys can live for like a year, so I didn't I thought it'd be, you know, a few days, but apparently they have a longer life cycle than I thought. So it looks like I've um inadvertently got myself a pet. <laughs> so after work I'm gonna go and see if I can either buy or get the supplies to make a proper butterfly house for her so she can actually fly around because um, she's been flapping her wings trying to fly and it's just too small in there for her and so I feel bad for that um, so I've looked online a little bit and I guess like you can get these mesh collapsible mesh houses they're kind of like those um, I guess like those laundry hamper things that you can get that are made out of mesh, except they've got a top as well. So I'm gonna see if I can find a place that sells those and get, um, maybe get a heat lamp for her, because my suite that I'm in gets really, really cold. Um, really cold, actually. So I don't think it'd be any better for her to be in there than to be outside, really. Um, look at that. It's so cool. So, um, yeah, after work I'm gonna, I think if I can't find those houses I can buy, like, um, some, uh, tool or something, some netting, and, um, <clears throat> either some wires, like wiring, um, not wiring, what am I talking about? Like, um, well, I looked online, there's one tutorial or whatever, it says to use embroidery hoops, like, big embroidery hoops and then you just um, basically make it into a cylinder and I might do something like that but I don't know I want to make it as big as I can so she can actually fly around a bit and then I'm gonna probably get some potted flowers so she's got live flowers in there to eat and I guess I should put some water in there I guess they make butterfly feeders that's what my coworker was saying where they basically have to stick their little tongue thing through uh, mesh so that they don't get, because it's important not to let their wings get um, wet or like if she got her wings in that honey that would be bad news, right? <coughs> so um, anyway, yeah, I just want to show you guys the, uh, the butterfly and where she's at um, yeah, she has been flapping her wings a little. Usually when I open, let's see if I open this a little bit. And let some air get in there. I guess she probably senses that there's a an avenue of escape. <coughs> so she starts to move around a bit. Um, but yeah, ultimately I want to, I guess, um, make a little house for her and then I'll probably let her go in May or so when it gets warmer if she's still around um, yeah so there's my pet butterfly <laughs> I was expecting to just be able to um, you know set her free but looks like that's not going to be the case so I'll be taking care of her for a bit close up on her wings. Let's see if I can get the camera in this angle here. There she is.
Mm. I was hoping she'd flap her wings a bit more for you guys, but I guess she's busy. Anyway, um, I guess I should get back to work. Well, I just want to get her back to work, really, because it's cold out here. I, I've had the heat cranked in my car to warm it up for her. But it's cooling off again, so I'm going to get some lunch and go back to work. And, um, I will keep you guys posted. Okay. Okay, so, this is the, uh, the final dwelling place of the butterfly. For now, anyway. <clears throat> Can't really see her in there. But this is my makeshift butterfly house. <laughs> um, it's a laundry hamper. One of those little pop up laundry hampers. Mesh. <clears throat> Pink. Because she is actually a girl. I would like to cut the top off eventually and get mesh on the, mesh on the top as well so she can see, um, get more light. For now, this will have to do. So I've put um, Velcro along the top of that as an opening, so I can get in through the top if I need to. And I also cut a little flap here. Oh, oh that's water. Okay. Um, a little trap door with Velcro as well, so I can get in. I am actually. It was quite hard to get her in there without her. I was afraid she was going to fly away, but she's in there now. She hasn't really flown yet, but. Uh, you can't There she is. <laughs> there she is. So I have um, <clears throat> bought her some flowers, some some uh, potted flowers, and um, put a twig in there for her to hang from. Hide it, or I, I sewed it to the edge of the thing. Um, what else? Oh yeah, these little. <laughs> I bought the. I went to the pet store, pet food store, or whatever, and I bought these little, like bird feeder thingies. And uh, one has water in it. This one, and the other one has um, mushed up banana. Because so far that's the only thing I've been able to get her to eat. Um, earlier at work. Oh, I just knocked a bunch of water out again. Um, just before I left work, she still hadn't eaten anything, and I was getting worried, so <clears throat> I looked up online and uh, said that if you want to attract butterflies to your yard and not, like you don't have a lot of flowers, um, that if you have fruit trees, you can just let the fruit fall and stay on the ground and start to uh, rot, and they will be attracted to that, like overripe fruit, so I got some banana. We had a couple of bananas at work that were starting to turn, and I um, mushed them up, and I used a stir stick to kind of um, basically <laughs> hand feed her uh, mushed up banana earlier, and uh, she actually ate that, so that was cool. But um, she's going to have to learn to use her instincts to find her food, because I'm not going to be here tomorrow I have to go to work. So <clears throat> I'm going to watch her and see if she finds either the banana or any of the flowers. Um, appealing and if not I guess I'll feed her again later but also I'd like to see her fly um, anyway I'm thinking I might make her a bigger house with um, like wood and screen like mesh um, like window screen stuff because then I can make it any size <coughs> I can just uh, you know, just make wooden frames and uh, put the mesh on there, and then um, and then just build like a box with a, a lid that I can get into her easily. Anyway, that's assuming she doesn't die of starvation, or you know, I'm hoping she's gonna make it. <laughs> My coworker and I sometimes joke about how we should have a baby. <laughs> Not like have a baby, but acquire a baby and raise it together. <laughs> and so today she uh, came.
came in at the end of the day to meet <laughs> the butterfly. She's like, oh my god, it's our baby. We just didn't know it wouldn't be human, but... Um, yeah, so this is her. <laughs> uh, oh, that's cool. Anyway, I guess I've bored you guys enough with my butterfly, uh... Um... Hmm. My butterfly <clears throat> saga. I've been stressed out all day about this little girl. <laughs> Hopefully she'll be alright, and uh, I'll let her go in a couple months when it's warmer out. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> if she starts to fly around lots, I'll videotape a little bit of that for you guys, and um, hopefully she'll keep eating. I'm going to try and give her some banana. Okay, uh, take care. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.